This is the uh, <clears throat> second book in the series of four books by uh, Princeton, uh, by Stein and Shikarshi. And uh, I'll be talking about, you know, if, if I was ever to read this book, which I am not sure that I ever will, what would I need uh, to, to get through it? Now, of the four books in the series, first one, Fourier series, this one, Complex Analysis, Third one is uh, measure theory and integration. Fourth one is advanced topics, including several complex variables and uh, some statistics uh, and other things. This one is the one that I actually could read right now. Uh, I, th I think I would need uh, to go back and uh, finish up with uh, Alphers, but I've already done Saf and Snyder. If you're on my channel, you'll see that I read all of Saf and Snyder. Uh, and actually, I read some good parts of Alphers. I would have to go back and brush up on complex analysis, but then I and, I, and I'm not going to show much about this book because I've, I've shown it else, elsewhere. Uh, the same for this book. And this would be more like a trophy because I, I love this uh, uh, pair of books by Needham uh, or Needham. Uh, complex analysis, and then he's got one on differential geometry. And I want to read both of them at some point, but it's one of those where my main line of my long first round, if there ever is a second round, I have no idea how long it's going to take me to do the first round of all of the courses in the undergraduate program for mathematics, uh, this would have to be a second round thing because there's so many other uh, courses that I want to teach myself uh, and learn from that I'll just, I don't know when I'll get to this book, but i am shown this book before. Uh, the book is beautiful, has tons of uh, uh, pictures, of course visual is in the title. Uh, a lot about uh, conformal mapping, um, yeah, Mobius transformations, all the good stuff. So, yeah, someday. It's a someday. Actually, both of these books are some days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, of the four, this is by far the easiest. So, as with uh, the other books in the series, I'll just show briefly the front matter and page through the book a little bit and then show some other books that I would want to read uh, before I read this book, or as I read this book, actually, yeah, as I mentioned, of the four books, this is the one that would be the uh, least hard for me to cover. Um, so, yeah, there's some front matter. You can pause the video and read what he's saying uh, at leisure. Yeah, so this is just a basic complex analysis book. Complex, you know, Cauchy's Theorem, uh, Meromorphic Functions. I made a little note because I like to remind myself what... A, uh, what it is to make a function uh, holomorphic, it's really differentiable in the complex plane, and then um, when you get to the concept of an entire function, he's got an entire chapter on entire functions. That's very repetitive for me to say, uh, and so it's all about uh, functions that are differentiable in the entire uh, complex plane. I think so. I think that's the correct thing to say. Uh, then, of course, so yeah, so this is your standard. I, I would never call it standard fair because the reason why uh, these books are, I think, would be great for me to read someday is because, yes, they abstract out and they summarize a lot of content, but uh, they, they just go at it hard. And I, it's, it's really nice to go at it hard. Uh, normal books for the little people like uh, Saf and Snyder, uh, little people like myself, uh, juniors, uh, really spoon feed you a lot, and and I think the the level at which these books were written is pretty good, high a little higher, and uh, yes, I this is why I'm interested in reading them. Otherwise, it would be like, well, I can just get that somewhere else. I'm not sure that that's true, especially when it comes to the problems. As I mentioned in the first uh, video for uh, for the first book, there are problems, and then there are exercises. The exercises are doable. And uh, many of them have the answer in the exercise, it's a proof. Uh, but then the problems at the end of each chapter are really stretch. You have to really go at it. These are harder, uh, more research type problems. So then they go, in, uh, they go into the gamma and zeta function and then jump into the zeta function and the prime number theorem. So actually this book is... I'm not sure it's half and half, but I think it's like three quarters of material that you would see in a complex analysis book, and about a quarter of what you would see uh, in uh, a number theory book. Then here there's some conformal mapping, 
which is also standard fare in uh, a uh, complex analysis book uh, and applications of the theta function an appendix on asymptotics uh, an appendix on the Jordan, uh, Jordan curve theorem yeah it's got figures and it's got a lot of explanations very well uh, edited so it's I'm sure it's not like one of these books other books that I've read that have a lot of typos and of course the, the hookup to number theory uh, brings me to these two books that I'm sure uh, if if I read this book I would uh, kind of do it at the same time uh, unlike the Furrier analysis volume the first one where I feel that I would have to do ODEs and PDEs and, uh, and an engineering uh, uh, Fourier analysis uh, book before I even started on the Fourier analysis uh, book for the Princeton lectures. In this case, I would probably do it side by side. Uh, I have got this uh, prime number theorem book. Uh, look at that, it just landed somewhere in the, at the printers where there was, pro it probably landed on the floor. Uh, but yeah, I've had this book for a while, back when I was doing number theory. I never made a video about it. So this would be a really good callback for uh, reading for reading the, um, the complex analysis book from Princeton. I don't know if I do it before, during, or after. Probably during. Uh, it's got some exercises. I don't think it's got answers in the back. I'm pretty sure it does not. Yeah, it does not. It's got appendices, primes. Yeah, so I would I would couple uh, reading this uh, Princeton's lectures uh, complex analysis book with something about the prime number theorem, and of course it's there's a very interesting book by Ed Edwards from uh, Dover on the zeta function. Uh, I have tried to read this book before. It's a little inaccessible, but uh, I think. By the time I got to this book, if I was reading the Princeton lectures, I would have already read the Fourier analysis one that has a little number theory, and then I would have been reading the complex analysis one, and I would have read about the prime number theorem. So I'd probably be in better shape to give this uh, book another go. The first time that I gave it a go, look at that Fourier analysis, there it is. Um, it was a, a bit of a, a stretch, a stretch for me. So more analytic number theory. So really there's a there's a strong theme of analytic number theory running through the Princeton Lectures book, at least the first one and the second one. And um, yeah, I'll just show this here in case you want to read it. But I'll stop right here and say, that's what I have to say about the second volume in the Princeton Lectures uh, and its complex analysis.